Hello, my name is Kyle Sinclair, and this is my review on the Certified Cyber Defenders course. So, I guess to give some context, um, my education and background leading up to this point, uh, I have a bachelor's degree in computing and information systems at Athabasca. I spent some time throughout my schooling um, on programming, uh, network protocols, packets, all, all that basic stuff. And I never really got into the weeds too much. I've installed Snort. I uh, never really got to play with it. I played a little bit around with Wireshark. Nothing serious. So after I finished my degree, I decided to try and learn more and get certifications. So I moved on to the CompTIA Security Plus, which offered even more theoretical knowledge on cybersecurity. Some of it uh, I was already familiar with uh, because in the past I, I have dabbled a bit with Hack the Box and um, listened to Darknet Diaries and consumed other forms of cybersecurity media. So that definitely helped me uh, pass this exam. So moving on from there, I was looking for more practical hands-on experience. So I found this course here. I, I, I followed TCM before, and I found this course here, which interested me quite a bit. It, the course was really fun. Um, there was a lot of hand-holding, uh, which was good for somebody with little experience but I had tremendous amount of fun completing this course. I did not go for the certificate, I just subscribed for the one month and just went through it at my own pace. After that, I decided to look into practical certification uh, to add to my resume, and I stumbled upon the Try Hack Me SOC Level 1. So I completed this course for the most part the the labs in here were very outdated and the, the some of the questions even though a lot of the community said that they were right they were just outdated and wrong so I had some issues with this course and I got really frustrated and fed up with this and I decided to look for more uh, higher quality content and that either left me with Blue Team Level 1 or Cyber Defenders. And the consensus on Reddit was Cyber Defenders is Blue Team Level 1.5. So I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money on one course and then like relearn or redo everything on the second course and spend just as amount, just the same amount of money. And it, it just seemed very inefficient to me. So a lot of people said Cyber Defenders was difficult and I can confirm that it is very difficult. Um, but I was up for the challenge and so yeah, I, st I started the course, I went through and it was very well done, well structured. Uh, they're always adding new content. You can see I, I completed the course um, in middle of July you see I'm at 99% uh, because they're always adding new things. They just added some videos to the malware analysis section here. Um, I don't think I can reveal anything in this video of the course content, um, but you can see here the, the topics that are discussed. Um, that being said, some issues I have with the course content is you can see a lot of uh, some stuff here, detecting network anomalies with Brim. You have a uh, network miner, NF dump, and there's a lot of these modules scattered throughout the course that are completely irrelevant to the exam. Now, my suggestion on this um, is to either either a have the course, the core content of the course laid out how it is now and then have the have an extra section at the bottom where they can put nf dump and all these modules that do not pertain to the exam whatsoever 
um, which will make it easier for somebody to review the course content if they fail the exam. Uh, and I was one of those people. So, there, like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of content which is amazing. They keep adding stuff, which is amazing. But there's a lot of modules that are not related to the exam that are just kind of thrown in here. I don't want to call it bloat because it is value and it, there is valuable modules. But um, yeah, so that that's my one suggestion. The other option or suggestion is to publicly release these modules uh, to demonstrate Cyber Defender's uh, quality in their content and their knowledge around the, the, um, the domain. I think that would add a lot of value to the website. And then people won't, won't just be going to Cyber Defenders for the course or for labs. They'll be going there as well for articles and modules that are not related to the exam. Um, additionally, there's also this malware section. The malware section, malware analysis is not on the exam. I, they said they were going to add it in the future, I think. But um, as of right now, there's 45 modules that you have to go through and get 100% to get a, a bonus 5% if you get under 70%, uh, which is the pass for the exam. So there's, like I said, there's a whole section here that is not on the exam, that is valuable, that will be added to the exam, but yeah, it's just going through the course, I want all the course content related to the exam to be there and only be there. Um, so it was a little overwhelming, all these modules. Um, I'm glad that there is extra content, but it could have just been structured a little better um, to put better emphasis on like what is on the exam and what is not, and then f focus highly focus on that um, particular content so there are labs that go with the course which is amazing there are separate labs they are not part of the cyber range they're completely separate um, so some of these labs or most of these labs are an hour or two hours at most um, however there are some labs that I got 11 hours on and even six and a half hours on and this kind of highlights another point that I want to make which is um, somebody now I, I could be their on target audience I know this is a very advanced um, certification but somebody with no SOC experience going into this when you go through these labs it can be difficult to understand what is valuable as an attacker uh, so for example if you have two systems and the attacker is you have a domain controller and a file server and the the attacker is trying to pivot from the domain controller to the file server to access a file um, it can be difficult for a defender with no experience to understand what specifically is of value so like I said, I don't have a lot of I don't have any SOC experience. I don't I have very limited cybersecurity defense experience. So going into this, and like I said previously, I have some hack the box experience um, with some labs doing walkthroughs. So in hack the box you have you always have some type of like text file that has the flag in it and it just says flag and it's like sweet, this is my target. You know what the target is. When you're a defender, you don't know what your target is. Um, you have like you have no idea. Like, are they trying to get something from that server? Are they trying to pivot to a different server? Are they trying to privilege escalation? Are there's so many different ways an attacker can take? And as a defender with little to no experience, I found it very difficult to sometimes figure that out, as you can see by my 11 hours for this lab. Now, the support that you get throughout these labs, if you ask for help, is the, the only thing that they will say to you is go take a break and keep trying. And it was very difficult 
to get through some of these questions when that's all you're told and you just feel like you're banging your head against a wall. I know there's some controversial um, opinions on this. Uh, the developers think that you should keep going until you figure it out. And I can assure you that if I were to revisit these labs that I spent 11 hours on, I would not remember any of the questions or answers to these labs. And this is a couple months later. So, um, yeah, the, the value in spending 11 hours on a lab is, is questionable to me. Um, but again, that's just my opinion. I, I don't know. Like I said, it's controversial. So anyways, moving on the, the, the next portion, I guess, is the exam. Uh, the exam was very challenging. Um, I failed the first time with uh, 40 something percent. And in order to to go through everything, I didn't want to go through all the course content again because it was a lot. But you see here they have extra exercises and they have all these retired labs here that you can actually go through and people have walkthroughs on them. So you can see the methodology that people use to solve these labs to try and uh, to try and improve on your techniques um, so you can pass the exam. Now, with that being said, I don't know the pass-fail rate of the first attempt, but with that price tag on the course and the incentive to produce a review like this, um, they give you free cyber range, which is the labs. Um, they give you free months subscription for doing a review. Now, my recommendation is if the pass rate is very low for the first attempt, why not give the student a month or two to redeem on the cyber range so they can go go through not only these these retired labs, but even some of the active lab, labs, um, which is what I did. Uh, so before I took the second exam, or the second attempt, I did end up climbing the leaderboards. I'm at rank 29. I got bumped down a couple positions over last week. Uh, I rank 2 in my country. And I, I did as many labs as I can pertaining specifically to the exam portion. So there's Threat Intel, Network Forensics, Endpoint Forensics, and Threat Hunting. And yeah, I just went through as many labs as I can, tried to learn as many techniques and, and learn things along the way. And then I retook the exam, my second attempt, my last att attempt, and I barely passed. Um, and you can see here, I got my certified title badge here. And yeah, I ended up completing the course and or the exam. I thought I did a lot better than I actually did. And yeah, it was a very, very difficult exam and very well done. Um, I like how they link all everything together. Everything's one giant, um, one giant lab touching on all the different subjects, which is great. Um, however, I guess to, to conclude or wrap things up, um, some points I want to touch on is the value of the this course um, in the job market specifically. Do I think there's value? No, absolutely not. Um, I do not think at all that having this badge or having this title on my resume adds value to my resume whatsoever. Uh, however, completely Con to contradict myself here, I think that the experience and the skills gained by going through this course adds tremendous value. Um, so, uh, again, the the little title, the little certification, whatever you want to call it, the little title on my resume that says Certified Cyber Defenders, I don't think an HR manager will even know what that is or even care. But when they go through my resume and see, 
oh, th this person has elastic experience, they have endpoint detection, forensics, uh, thread hunting, volatility, disk forensics, like everything, everything you need for a SOC, I feel like, um, is there and the experience is there, which adds a ton of value to my resume. Um, like I said, the title alone, I feel like means nothing. But the experience you gain through this course is is invaluable. Um, so I highly recommend this course, not for the title, not for the badge, but for the experience itself, which is exactly what I was looking for in a course. Um, other than that, I think, uh, like I said, the course is very well done. Um, they, they could change a few things with the with the way the content is laid out or presented uh, regarding specifically the exam. Um, I'm really happy with my choice in going with Cyber Defenders over Blue Team Level 1. And yeah, that concludes my review. Thanks for watching.